In Starfleet Command, there is no ship more grand, more intimidating, more sturdy than the battleship. Titanic vessels that in most cases were so expensive and difficult to build that most empires never bothered. While all had an on-paper design, only a very few were ever actually able to commit the resources to construct these behemoths. In-game, however, we have access to these gods of war, and so today we'll be counting down the best battleships from amongst the eight grand empires. The restrictions are simple. One battleship will be selected from each empire and ranked amongst the battleships from the seven other empires. They will be judged on speed, maneuverability, special capabilities, protection, and most of all, firepower. The ships will be judged individually, that is, no supporting fleets, although their onboard fighter complements will be taken into account. It is important to remember though, this list will be subjective, based on our 12 seasons of playing Starfleet Command 2 Orion Pirates Plus mod, and some vessels may seem on paper to be superior to others, but will fail due to certain intangibles that we will attempt to explain. When talking about battleships, firepower is a given. They will all be able to produce monumental salvos of heavy weapons and phaser fire. However, the Cave Lion suffers from the Lyran's narrow-minded devotion to producing warships designed purely to fight the Marak Star League, and half the time failing at that. The Cave Lion has two major issues that place it firmly at the bottom of this list. Weak armament and poor range. Festooned with no less than 10 disruptor mounts, one might think the second point is rendered a lie. However, this would be ignoring the primary issue with disruptors. Poor burst damage. The disruptor is a skirmishing weapon designed to whittle away at enemy vessels from long range, providing rapid and accurate fire at the expense of, however, of major damage. The cave lion may have long claws, but those claws are blunt, meaning that while it can plink from range, its ability to do any actual major damage at range is almost non-existent. The lack of range soon, however, gives way to the battleship's major failure, and that is poor armament. While the 14 Phaser Xs may seem like a perfectly reasonable secondary battery, and they are, the powerful Phaser batteries are backed up by six anemic Phaser 3 mounts, inferior to most other tertiary batteries. Most damning, however, is the expanding sphere generator. Both bludgeon and shield, the ESG can produce up to 20 damage worth of defense or attack, and the cave line has no less than six of them. This means a Cave Lion battleship can spit out a heavy weapon salvo of 120 damage in one massive burst. At point blank range. Yes, if the Cave Lion wishes to use its teeth to the fullest extent, it must be within grappling distance, allowing such a dangerous weapon to be easily avoided, even by slow, ponderous battleships. These two factors lead to an unfortunate problem. The battleship is scatterbrained. The disruptor armament works at long range, however lacks the high damage potential when brought in close. The phaser array is decent for a vessel of this size, but operates at mid-range. The ESG is a flexible defense or attack, but only works at point-blank range. This layered weapons array makes it not especially powerful in any bracket. The design is clearly built to be able to handle the massed Marak missile swarms. However, because of this emphasis on protection from one specific threat, the battleship sacrifices its ability to be aggressive. Furthermore, like all Lyran designs, the Cave Lion battleship lacks any sort of point defense system aside from the previously mentioned Phaser 3 group. With no Plasma D torpedoes or AMD system, the Lion must use the very same heavy weapons meant to inflict damage on the enemy to defend itself, rendering it mostly impotent. All these factors work against the Lyran Cave Lion from being anywhere but the bottom of our list. The Interstellar Concordium battleship suffers somewhat from our list restrictions. As with most other ISC vessels, the battleship is designed to operate as part of a fleet, utilizing interlocking specialities to deliver a devastating punch to any opponent who stands against them. However, since we do not allow support fleets on this list, the BBX of the ISC drops down to number 7. The overall good design of the vessel suffers somewhat from similar problems to the previous entry on this list, and that is lack of concentrated firepower. Its traditional plasma armament is anemic, consisting of only two Plasma S torpedoes and four Airzats Plasma F torpedoes courtesy of the Type I torpedo mounts used for point defense. However, the plasma torpedo is not the main armament of this Goliath. 
The primary heavy weapon of the ISC battleship is no less than four plasmatic pulsar devices. The PPD uses a special targeting beam to lock onto an enemy vessel, then, once a lock is achieved, sends wave after wave of searing hot plasma at the target. Unerring in accuracy and spreading damage across multiple fronts, it is the perfect weapon to soften up an opponent for a plasma torpedo follow-up from supporting heavy cruisers. On its own, however, the four PPDs are capable of pounding their way through decently heavy shielding, and the fact the weapon splashes the damage over multiple shields means the enemy must either take direct damage to their side shields or split their shield reinforcement over multiple shield locations, drastically reducing the effectiveness of that reinforcement. The PPD, however, suffers from a major weakness. It cannot operate within a range of 40,000 kilometers, or more commonly referred to as a range of four. To back up this armament, the ISC BBX only has 13 Phaser Xs, making it less suitable in a brawl, though the tertiary battery is fairly impressive. No less than 12 plasma eye torpedo launchers arranged in four hardpoints cover the battleship from all angles with defensive plasma torpedoes, allowing the vessel to handle fighter squadrons of all types. This system is tremendously power intensive, however, and when preparing to fire, the battleship's power generation is sorely tested. These four mounts, however, can produce four plasma F torpedoes to be used against other capital ships, which, while small, are still nearly 100 damage in total of additional, if spread out, firepower. To round out the tertiary armament, eight Phaser 3s provide efficient close-in defense from drones or fighters that manage to survive the eye torpedo bombardment. It is clear then that the ISC BBX is a mid to long range battleship, having neither the tremendous amount of close-in plasmas or a blistering array of Phaser Xs. Its main weapon being completely nullified against ranges of less than four means that should the battleship find itself in a close range slugging match, it will most certainly come out the loser. With that said, a properly managed ISC battleship can stay at long range using the threat of its S-plasma torpedoes to stave off a direct assault, and a small wing of six fighters can be used in a point defense role. Still, without its supporting element, the Interstellar Concordium battleship lacks the massive punch of other battleships higher up on this list. The Merak BBM is the only non-X-refit battleship on our list, and for good reason. While most other factions utilize some form of energy-based heavy weapon, the Merak alone attempt to deal with their damage physically. Masters of Missiles, the highly aggressive Merak Merv refit battleship is a fascinating study of maneuverability, speed, and short-lived firepower. Similar to the ISC battleship in attempting to keep the range, the Merak vessel is much more flexible thanks to its primary heavy weapon being missiles. The missile launcher in Starfleet Command is a devastating and flexible weapon, capable of launching multiple different kinds of missiles at an energy cost of absolutely free. The common anti-ship missile is the Type 4M, a medium speed missile capable of dealing 24 damage with its massive warhead. Considered to be the most efficient missile, a Merak captain can improve the striking speed of his missiles by utilizing the Type 4F, which upgrades the engines in the missile to travel to speed of 36, giving the weapon an effective range of 108 against a non-maneuvering target. Supplementing the standard missile launchers is the MERV missile launcher, standing for multiple independent re-entry vehicle. The MERV is a force multiplier, launching a missile that, upon reaching its activation point, will explode into six additional missiles, though at one-sixth the damage. Carrying two MIRVs and ten conventional launchers, the Merak BBM is capable of putting out salvos of 22 missiles per cycle and dealing a titanic 288 damage, more than nearly every other battleship on this list. A Merak captain's options expand further if they plan their salvos properly, able to stack multiple salvos together to create even higher density salvos. In this way, a Merak battleship can fire no less than three salvos of MIRVs, equating to 36 reduced damage missiles, and an additional 10 conventional missiles, creating a wall of fire consisting of over 46 independent weapons, all homing on a single target. While the massive amount of firepower may appear daunting, missiles suffer from several major drawbacks by being physical weapons. First and foremost, a Merak battleship entering the battle has a limited number of missiles with which to use, meaning that an undisciplined captain will soon find himself out of ammunition to hurl at the enemy at all. While this may not seem like a major handicap with the large numbers of weapons being used to overwhelm the enemy, things become much more complicated with the fact that the missiles can be destroyed or spoofed come into play. A missile has a set number of hull points, which, if it takes sufficient damage, will destroy the missile, nullifying the damage. Specialized point defense systems, such as the creatively named Anti-Missile Defense System, or AMD, and the Plasma D torpedo are capable of efficiently and swiftly eliminating large swaths of incoming salvos. 
point defense tractor beams can be used to hold missiles from being able to impact against the target hull, and the ubiquitous Wild Weasel shuttle, which mimics the drive signature of a launching vessel, can spoof enemy missiles into wasting themselves harmlessly on the decoy instead of the ship. Clever captains can make use of transporter mines to cut huge holes in oncoming salvos, and as a final resort, phasers are accurate enough weapons to shoot down incoming missiles, though this is often not the best use of these flexible weapon systems. With all these drawbacks, it takes a clever captain to overcome the enemy defenses, and the BBM is designed to do just that. Speed and maneuverability have been emphasized over protection, allowing a Mirac captain to place himself where needed to cut through enemy defenses, and while this means that early on in a fight a Mirac vessel will be able to strike at will, the longer the battle drags on, the weaker the Mirac's position will become. The standard disruptor battleship complement of 10 disruptors can be used at high speeds to supplement missile barrages, and should a salvo strip the shield from an enemy vessel, those disruptors will suddenly come into their own, plinking at maximum range to steadily whittle down the enemy. In close, however, the stakes are raised considerably. Missile flight times become reduced, which can overwhelm enemy defenses. However, the secondary armament of the Mirac battleship is only 12 Phaser 1s, a generation behind the others, and fewer than all the other races. Finally, a tertiary armament of 8 Phaser 3s and 4 AMDs provides close-in protection from an enemy supporting numerous fighters or their own modest complement of missiles. To help either defend the ship or thicken salvos, a Mirac battleship comes equipped with 8 additional fighters, adding to the swarm that the BBM can output. The reason why the BBM is on this list and not the BBX is simple. The BBX lacks the MIRV launchers and instead relies on 12 traditional missile launchers. This approach, while offering longer sustained firepower, sacrifices the ability to build large salvos, which, given the preponderance of missile defense systems from most vessels in later years, and especially on battleships, means that its primary heavy weapons lack the necessary punch to get through the massed enemy defensive fire. Once the BBM's missiles are depleted, however, her follow-up punch is incredibly anemic, especially for a battleship, leaving the vessel vulnerable to be run down and destroyed, its maneuverability and speed providing little defense should she not sufficiently maul her opponent. One of the most flexible and capable battleships on this list, the Federation BBX is a monster of a vessel sporting a dizzying array of special weapons, an excellent phaser complement, solid armor, tremendous redundancy, and decent speed. While Federation vessels are often considered average in all respects, the BBX punches above her own weight class thanks to the collective technologies from the Federation member worlds and her allies. At the center of the battleship is no less than 10 photon torpedo launchers, 8 forward firing tubes and 2 aft firing tubes. The photon torpedo is the most flexible weapon in the game thanks to its multiple firing modes. In normal mode, the weapon only deals 8 damage, which is somewhat lacking when looking at other heavy weapons from other nations. However, the damage suffers no drop-off. If a photon torpedo hits you, it will deal its damage, something no other weapon can boast. In proximity mode, the photon torpedo becomes a sniping weapon, capable of nailing targets at a range of 55, huge compared to many other weapons, and the only sacrifice is the warhead only hits for 4 damage. When in close, the photon torpedo can be overloaded, dealing 16 damage, meaning that on photon torpedoes alone, the Federation battleship can cause 32 damage in proximity mode, 64 damage in normal mode, and 128 damage in overload. This allows a Federation captain to pick the right weapon for the job, giving him near unlimited flexibility. Supporting this massive torpedo armament is a surprising 9 missile launchers, able to contribute 216 additional damage to a stunned opponent. While the Mirac use missiles as a primary weapon, the Federation merely use them as a supplementary armament, meaning that the Federation battleship can pick and choose the right moment to unleash a devastating missile strike when the enemy least suspects it. 15 Phaser X's with excellent firing arcs gives the Federation battleship the ability to lay into an enemy from almost any angle, and a complement of three additional Phaser G's can provide either a blistering barrage of fire into an already weakened enemy, or pick off fighters, missiles, or pseudo frigates in short order. The Phaser G, or Gatling Phaser, is capable of firing four times per hardpoint, and at a strength of a Phaser 3, meaning that the Federation battleship enjoys comparative armament of 12 Phaser 3's. A total of four AMDs finish off the weapons on this ship, allowing it to task its phasers with dealing damage to the enemy rather than being used to defend against missiles and fighters. As a battleship, the Federation BBX is nearly the pinnacle of solid, reliable design. Its weapons do not suffer from ammunition shortages, it can bring tremendous amounts of fire at close range while still having the ability to cause immense damage at distances most other battleships can only dream of. 
Its multiple system redundancies means that not only can it take a pounding that would leave certain other battleships flaming wrecks, but it also gives it a shield regeneration rate higher than other Empire vessels. All in all, when it comes to conventional battleships, there is nearly none finer. But even that sort of capability only gives it the number 5 slot on our list. The Hydran Monarch-class battleship carrier is another specialist on our list, being the only battleship carrier to make the cut. And that is for a simple reason. Hydrans love fighters. Their BBVX has an astonishing amount of firepower melded with the aggressiveness and flexibility of huge waves of fighter squadrons, allowing it to terrorize nearly any battleship on this list. And one look at its equipment will quickly convince anyone why the Hydrans deserve so high a slot. For conventional armament, the Monarch only sacrifices two Hellbore cannons from the standard battleship variant, bringing it down to six such weapons instead of eight. The Hellbores are medium to long range heavy weapons that has some curious properties. When fired, and it is quite accurate when fired, the weapon will burst upon impact with the enemy's shield. Due to the interactions with the energies, some of the amount of the damage will be dealt to nearly all the shields, but the vast majority will be funneled and concentrated onto the weakest shield. This means that against such a weapon, positioning is pointless. If you have a downed shield, the Hellbores will find it and rip open your hull, meaning that the longer the fight goes on, the more and more danger you are in. A terrifying weapon in its own right, it also interacts with Lyran ESGs, dealing straight damage to the ESG hardpoint, quickly disarming Lyrans of one of their most important weapons. In addition, the weapon is resistant to the effects of electronic countermeasures, making it frightfully accurate at all ranges. Utilizing such a powerful support weapon, Hydrans can exploit opportunities made by their other weapon systems to pick apart any foe. A quartet of fusion cannons backs up the Hellbores, for anyone who gets truly close. These point-blank range weapons deal tremendous amounts of damage when overloaded, and can generate the shield breaches the Hellbores can use to pluck an enemy apart. Should the need arise, the fusion cannon can be suicide overloaded, destroying the weapon mount, but dealing potentially 39 damage per mount. Backing up the heavy weapons, the Hydrans bring 14 Phaser Xs to the table, giving them a respectable close-in armament, but it's the four Gatling Phasers that steal the show, outputting a torrent of light fire that can shred ship systems on an overrun, or handle incoming fighters or missiles. The focus of the vessel, however, is the 20 fighters carried in the large hangar bay, with flexible options ranging from interceptors with four more Gatling Phasers to Hellbore-equipped Hornets. The fighters of a Monarch are her true main battery. A single pass from a massed group of fighters can cripple or destroy nearly any vessel the Monarch is likely to come up against, and their ability to range from the carrier and skirmish with enemy vessels before returning home for repair and rearm means that supporting weapons like the Hellbore can be even more devastatingly effective. By the time you get into close range with a Hydran Monarch, you're already half dead, allowing for easy cleanup. However, a clever captain can whittle away and destroy the fighter squadrons one by one, and should he do so without taking too much damage in reply, the Monarch loses a considerable amount of its punch. Still deadly by any definition, the loss of the weapons from the battleship version leave the carrier slightly undergunned for her size. Still, anyone foolish enough to attempt to take on the greatest supercarrier in the galaxy had better come with a plan. If there was ever a vessel that was named correctly, it would be the Gorn Godzilla class battleship. There is nothing subtle about the Godzilla class. There is no clever tricks to flying it, no salvo stacking or ranged skirmishing or mobbing your enemy with fighters. There is only the crunch and the aftermath. The Gorn BBX is the second of the three plasma battleships, the first being the ISC battleship and is built along completely different lines to her earlier cousin listed here. A true plasma battleship armed to the teeth with all manner of weapons. Two R-type plasma torpedoes, three S-type plasma torpedoes, and two F-type plasma torpedoes give the Godzilla a massive, consistent, and unending punch of 230 damage in plasma alone. Although 30 damage of that comes courtesy of a mount that fires in the aft half of the ship, requiring a gentle turn to bring it to bear. Plasma is a homing weapon and will inexorably travel towards a target unless it dissipates over long distances, is blasted by enough phaser fire to make it incoherent, or the enemy utilizes a wild weasel decoy. In order to mitigate those issues, the plasma torpedo launcher can fire pseudo-plasma torpedoes, which appear to be real on sensors and will absorb fire or trick the enemy into deploying wild weasels, but are in fact fake, allowing you to follow up with your real salvo of fiery death. The Godzilla is, in a word, terrifying. In addition to its plasma armament, it brings 16 Phaser Xs, giving it a consistent, repeatable mid- and short-range punch. Aside from the massive armored bulk, the Godzilla also features four Plasma-D torpedoes for missile and fighter defense, and seven Phaser 3s. 
Finally, two pseudo-fighters, equipped with plasma F torpedoes as well, give the Gorn battleship a small measure of additional firepower to terrorize the enemy even further. The solid, uncomplicated sledgehammer of the Godzilla-class battleship allows it to barrage its way through nearly any enemy. It does not stop. It endlessly pursues, weapon fire bouncing off its hull, and when it corners you, it drowns you in plasma and phaser fire. However, this uncomplicated nature is also its undoing. As clever opponents will take advantage of the relatively short-ranged plasma punch of the Godzilla, darting around and nipping at the flanks, and while it is terrifying, it will only ever be our number three. Whether or not this showed up on our list at all was a matter of some debate for me, as at a glance, it simply dwarfs all others, and it seemed like there would be no competition. The Klingon B-11X Super Battleship, designed to defeat and overwhelm any opponent. The B-11X brings with it more firepower, more protection, and more armor than any other battleship on this list, bar none. And you would be well advised to avoid engaging this behemoth, if at all possible. The start of this tremendous amount of firepower seems modest enough, 10 disruptors. As we've discussed, disruptors on battleships are thoroughly disappointing weapons, relegated to almost a secondary battery status. While the long-range skirmishing of the battleships is common, the lack of total damage doable means that it will struggle to pierce the reinforcement of a shield. Still, when taken in with all the other weapons on the super battleship, their role suddenly becomes well placed. Twelve missile launchers line the hull in three massive arrays matching the Merak battleship heavy weapon for heavy weapon. While the missile launchers lack the Merv capability, like the Federation battleship, they are used to supplement their other heavy weapons rather than being their primary damage dealer. The missiles, however, are a nasty surprise at close range, where the B-11 is very comfortable being, and should a captain find himself suddenly tractured by the Klingon battleship, he will be witness to a barrage that few can survive. The truly astonishing thing about the B-11X is its phaser battery. There is no less than 19 phaser Xs, providing accurate, powerful fire at large angles and concentrated in the forward arc. The flanks receive decent coverage as well, providing few angles for a clever captain to try and exploit. Once overloaded, the phasers deal nearly 15 damage apiece, providing the true hidden main battery of the vessel. A quad mount AMD and six phaser threes round out the super battleship's firepower, and a squadron of eight fighters can be used to either increase the offensive or defensive capabilities of the battleship, depending on the captain's needs. One aspect of the battleship that truly dwarfs the other battleships is the truly massive shield system, boasting an additional six points of protection on all faces, giving the forward shield the capability to take tremendous amounts of fire while the B-11 wades into battle. Truly, the B-11 is a nearly unstoppable force, the paragon of battleship, and yet... In the end, there could only be one. Hail to the King Condor. Providing the same firepower, sans a single Phaser 3, as the Godzilla-class battleship, the King Condor has more of everything else. More tractor beams, more transporters, better pseudo-fighters, but most of all, a cloaking device. The King Condor is the silent master of the battlefield, unleashing titanic volleys of plasma fire, then disappearing before reply can be had. While every other battleship must use clever trickery or sheer brute force to close a gap and get into a good firing position, the King Condor alone can command when the fight commences and when it ends. The massive missile armaments of the Merak BBM or the Klingon B-11 are useless against the cloak, and the powerful shields of all the battleships cannot take the amount of plasma the vessel can put out. And that is the pure and simple reason why the King Condor reigns supreme. While the K-11 can outgun her at close range, keeping her there is nigh impossible against a clever enough captain. And while the absolute alpha of the Merak will deal more damage, the ways to mitigate plasma are fewer, and plasmas never run dry. While calling her perfect would be a stretch, as the worst on our list actually has several ways of dealing with the skulking KCNX, she is by far the most capable, the most deadly, and the very best battleship in Starfleet Command. And that concludes our list. There is but a single caveat. The meat is more important than the metal. While we have ranked them, each and every one of these battleships can beat each and every other battleship. The key to victory isn't how many plasma torpedoes you brought to the fight, nor fighters mobbing your enemy, nor even a cloaking device. It's a man or woman in the captain's chair who truly decides who wins and who loses. As we all grow and learn as captains, we take on greater and greater challenges, some seemingly impossible, but the key is to never give up. Never look at a problem and say, this cannot be solved. 
because you've stopped too soon. You may not be able to solve it alone, you may not know enough right now to deal with it, but whenever you look at a problem that seems impossible, always remember the end of that phrase. This cannot be solved... yet. So take on a B-11 with a cave lion, or fight your way through a battle with a king condor and your monarch. Never give up. Tenacity is victory. And so, I've been Tirek. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to receive notifications every time I release content, press that little bell icon. Leave a comment. What did you think about the list? Did you agree with any? Do you think it should be rearranged? Let me know what you think. And I will see you all in the next episode.